What's up, guys? My name is Juan. Welcome to We Talk. Today, no one else except for me. It's a special uh, video just made for you today. A one year anniversary. Yeah, it's been one year. It's crazy. It went by so fast. But what we want to do is share with you the highlights of the videos we composed this year. And uh, we hope you actually are going to enjoy it as much as we did. One thing I want to mention, um, not only from me, but also from the We Talk crew, we really much appreciate everyone. Uh, for engaging, for sending us your comments, your opinions on Twitter, on YouTube. Please keep doing that because that's basically what we're aiming at. And if you keep doing that, of course, uh, we can also take your comments, your questions, and also discuss it with the panel members that we have. So moving on to the videos, and I really hope you guys are going to like this today. It's all about basically what Ajax went through last season. So we started out last season uh, selling Frankie de Jong and selling, uh, of course, De Ligt and also Schöne left us. So we had a very big problem in the in the center, you know, in the in the midfield, but also at the back. And at the same time, Ajax uh, bought Alvarez at that time and also uh, Marine. And those were two very big uh, signings for us. Now, we all know how this went, but uh, talking about the team balance, that's something that really came back a couple of times. And we want you to check out the video right now. We think the half will continue with this formation. He will be stupid not to. He will be stupid not to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, this is the best Ajax you've seen. Why would you change the winning team? Because he never, in the first half of the season, he never substituted and gave the, those second tier players, if I may call them that, uh, chances to play. Now you, you ha you're forced to bring them in. And you expect something from them, but they don't have you the rhythm. You expect a miracle from them, but it's impossible. Everybody, Actually, it's every, too late. Yeah, everybody, too late. everybody yeah. can make a mistake, you know? Mm -hmm. But he's the architect, you know? He should be there and he can see it because he lacks speed, but he's the architect. Now you're so, being sarcastic. Yes, I am. Okay. The thing that I'm disappointed about is that this is basically an end of a, of, a, of an era in terms of the players that we had, because we're going to, we yeah. already know Ziyech is leaving and yeah. probably there will be a lot of more players leaving in the summer as well. So it will be a rebuild again for yeah. next year. And then you don't know what you have, what you're bringing in as well. And that's the problem because um, the balance isn't in the team at the moment. Yeah. And uh, the, the routine that we had with Frankie at the midfield, it isn't easily um, replaced. Nobody can take the role like Frankie does. So. Is he? Is he for you? Is this now? Well, is, is this now? No, no not or now. Or no, no, for you? no. Because you paid a decent amount yeah. for Marine. Mm -hmm. Half a year he hasn't played a lot. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Then you loan him out. What does it do with his confidence? And actually, it's also a sign because basically Ajax is saying, you know what? We don't really need you. This is true. Not because of Huntelaar, but because of the, the, the way he fills in that spot on the nine in... Um, Comparing to Tadic. But you know, you should be careful because not all panel members are fond of Huntelaar. You know that, They right? can have their own opinion. Of course. Yeah. And you too. Yeah. Okay, guys. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the first series of clips. Moving on to the next one. Uh, it's all about Ten Hag, basically. Ten Hag had a very difficult season, perhaps his most difficult season uh, at Ajax so far. And partly it had to do with the team balance, as you just saw in the previous videos. But also one of the things that we discussed um, quite a bit here with the panel members is his substitutions, but also his uh, inability to make tactical um, adjustments. And um, not only that, it also raised some questions from the panel members. And well, take a look for yourself. I do not see this with Tanakh. It's You're like questioning his tactical ability. It's like sometimes it's a one trick pony. It's always the same approach. And why can he not turn things around? What is up with bringing Sim de Jong? That's a substitution. I don't know. I mean, what is up with bringing Sim de Jong? I love Sim de Jong. I was in the stadium when, uh, when we got the third star, the 30th uh, championship. He will always have a positive, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, like, like memory for me, but it was in the past. At this moment, he is not good enough for to play in Ajax. What do you think? Things will be okay in a few weeks? Uh, let's hope so. Are you I confident? Think, I'm confident if um, if Den Haag uh, shows some balls. But it started already. Possession. But it started already when we were nil nil, and we didn't play a good first half. He already yeah. changed a couple of things. He so, changed a couple of things. So he did show us because yeah. one of the criticisms we had is that he doesn't do anything during the game. No, exactly. It doesn't seem but that he's doing anything during the game. Indeed, it annoys me a little bit. Do you think? Do you think he's panicking a little bit? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't maybe know. What that's why he's making these substitutions. He's always he's always holding on to the same. Uh, a couple of players. If you're a coach and you see that you're down to 10 men 
and you see it's going to take a while before you bring the 11th player. Why don't you change the, no. the or switch something on the field or somebody like Blint? Because Blint was blaming uh, the coaching staff. Like, why is it taking so yeah. long? Ajax is a club that plays youth, makes them grow and sells them. That's their business. That's their philosophy. That's everything, right? Um, don't stray too far away from that. And that's the problem. You know what they say with the, the winning coach is always right. In this case, we can say the losing coach is always wrong. Bruh. Oh, guys. All right. So we're moving on to the next uh, video clips. One of the most important thing this season was, of course, the VAR, which was new. And uh, well, I don't want to talk too much about the VAR, but as Ajax fans, we cannot be happy about this first season. There were a couple of very controversial decisions, especially the Chelsea games. So we have just a few video clips for you just to watch how we thought about it. They show two fragments. They show you two, two videos. Yeah. The first video they show you as a replay is you see Sia um, from a bigger angle, from a larger angle, you see him shooting the ball. Promise is not even offside. And then they zoom in and then they show you that Promise is slightly offside, but then you don't see Ziyech. When it's towards the goal, exactly. and it's in the trajectory and it hits the arm and it's not in a natural position, at least a review is necessary. True. They got cheated so bad and uh, I still don't understand the decisions. I think uh, we should check the bank account of that referee afterwards because there must be some kind of match fixing. This is the second time Ajax gets fucked because of VAR. Okay, please watch your language. I'm sorry, but yeah. I'm so pissed off right now. All right, guys, so we have a couple of other videos for you. And this is basically about one specific player. And well, usually we don't have clips of one player, but this one was such a recurring topic throughout the season and especially at one panel member. So we have Papimento and he's not very fond of Huntelaar. Everybody knows that. If you have been watching our videos, you're aware of this. For the new people watching us, well, it's going to be very clear to you what he thinks about Huntelaar. Have a look. I think you have something against Huntelaar, which is not, not okay, very objective fine. in my opinion. I think he's just a mediocre player and uh, he's a great striker, but the rest he, he sucks at. Well, I have to say this, man. <laughs> Didn't you laugh at the, like almost first half was over and then that Huntelaar dribble move? <laughs> it made me laugh so bad. You mentioned Huntelaar. He yeah. came in. Yeah. Did you see the tweet of uh, Papimento? Uh, actually, I didn't. I, I was watching the, the game, so I didn't look on my, my phone. Well, well he wasn't much. very happy with... Uh, of course, he, he never is. Really, really terrific. Ziyech in the first half. Yeah, Ziyech was amazing. Wow. Today. Yeah, and uh, probably for you, Huntelaar not playing, so it couldn't go worse. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, I never sit here, so I just was just wondering how it is to be a panel member. But uh, I hope you guys like the clips. Moving on to the next one, and actually the final ones. Um, it's all about emotions. You know, we're fans, and sometimes we say things uh, in the heat of the moment. And it's been an emotional roller coaster basically this year. We started out really well in the season. Uh, we did very well to qualify for the Champions League. We were uh, basically excited. We were all buzzing. And we did pretty much a very good job in the beginning also in the Champions League. In the league, we were going. Um, amazingly, basically, we didn't lose any games until we went into November, December, and basically the winter month was not the best uh, period for Ajax. A couple of injuries, also uh, Ten Hag struggling to find a balance, losing games, important games. And, you know, when the Corona came, we were basically tied with AZ, um, and it would have been a very tight race to the end, but uh, we will never know how it ended. But one thing is for sure, the emotions were there. No, well, and, we all know. Look, we all know that when you uh, when you get the goal against, it's going to be a no, different no, no, game. No, no, no. AZ no. played a little bit no. that tougher game today no. with a lot of. I'm sorry, defenders. No. That's an excuse because you're talking now about the game of AZ today. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about now the the last few games we're playing. Maybe we are more fit. Looking at the squad, losing three very important players last year. Maybe we have a little bit more of a Europa League team, a good Europa League team. Are you kidding team. me? You're, acting, might, you're acting like they, they lost. lost. But you're acting like they lost no, the game. but I can be disappointed, can't I? I'm, I'm After a five, no, no, you yeah, cannot. Of course. How is that of possible? Course. People of watching course. us will think now because that you're crazy. Yeah. Ratings. Uh, who was your man of the match? I wanted to say Spurs. Until that moment. Until that moment that he fucked up. Yeah. 
so I'm going for Martinez. Uh, what do you have against Chelsea? Oh, I don't think we have the time for that, man. Okay, no, in a nutshell. I, no, in a no, nutshell. No, no. So what I, do, I, I don't like the club at all. Uh, I don't. I don't like the way they play. I don't like their history. I don't like their fans. I don't. I don't like anything about that. So <laughs> well, it's that's basically clear. like uh, the same reason I hate uh, PSV is the same reason I hate Chelsea. So